Hello there. Welcome to Just a Dis. My name is Brian. We talk about Blu-rays here. And uh, for this round, I am going to talk about the delightful Warner Archive Blu-rays coming this month in September. But first, uh, I do like to sometimes when I do these talk about upcoming titles. And there's a lot of good stuff coming in October. Uh, I'm just going to run through these real quick, but um, Night Shift, Ron Howard's awesome 80s comedy Night Shift, one of the first films to harness the incredible electric power of Michael Keaton and his erratic uh, personality and energy. Uh, Night Shift is one of the great examples of him being used well. Uh, also, Dinner at Eight, the classic film with um, uh, John Barrymore. And Lionel Barrymore, I believe, um, as well as Gene Harlow, of course. And uh, that's cool. And then we have the Tex Avery Volume 3, Tex Avery Screwball Collection Volume 3. Uh, those releases have, have been just outstanding, and I cannot wait to get my hands on Volume 3. All the transfers have looked good. They're just wonderful sets. I'm so glad they're continuing doing those. Then we have uh, Mad Love. Uh, with Peter Lorre and Colin Clive from Frankenstein. Uh, the original body parts, if you will. You know, a surgeon uh, replaces the hands of his this woman he's obsessed with, husband, uh, replaces the guy's hands with the hands of a knife-throwing killer. And things get crazy. Um, so that's super cool. Then we have Eye of the Devil with David Niven um, and Deborah Kerr. A great... Um, Great thriller uh, that I know Joe Dante is a big fan of. Um, then we have a wonderful uh, double bill of Val Luton produced films. We have Ghost Ship and Bedlam. And I love that they're continuing with that series. I'm wondering, there has been some speculation that we haven't seen The Seventh Victim. We haven't seen I Walk With a Zombie. And I've said this before on the channel. We're hoping maybe Criterion is doing those or something. We'll see. But either way, maybe Criterion or Warner Archive. I don't know. Um, also coming this next month is Children of the Damned. That's getting, uh, that the original 60s film is getting a uh, Blu-ray from Warner Archive as well. So it's a great run of stuff. A lot of spooky, scary films for the month of October. But let's get into this September collection, which is just fantastic. And part of the reason it's so fantastic is because of this. And I believe I've actually even done a video about this film being one of my most wanted films on Blu-ray. This is Straight Time from 1978, starring Dustin Hoffman, directed by Ulu Grossbard, and uh, also co-starring uh, Gary Busey, Teresa Russell, um, Edward Bunker, um, Kathy Bates is great in it, Gary Busey's son is in it. Anyway, this is just... One of my favorite 70s crime films of all time. Uh, Dustin Hoffman plays Max Dembo, who is a sort of a career thief uh, criminal who's been in and out of juvenile institutions and incarceration his entire life. He's just getting out of jail again, and he's given a terribly unpleasant parole officer played to perfection by the great M. Emmett Walsh, who I think I've told the story many times on the channel, but of course I'll tell it again because it ties right into this movie, was hired for his role in Blood Simple by the Coen brothers because they saw him in this movie being just the most incredible, unreasonable, horrible person that he is as this parole officer guy. It just nails it. It's like this very, you know, slightly nice outwardly, but deeply passive aggressive and horrible person. And he's just so good. Um, uh, but yeah, so Dustin Hoffman's character gets out uh, of jail, is having a lot of trouble getting a job, gets a little help from Teresa Russell, who is at the employment agency, and starts sort of dating her, and then finds himself getting sucked back into the life again, and bringing his friend Harry Dean Stanton along with him. And it's, you know, it's a downbeat movie, but it's so well done. You know, it's just one of those films you watch it, and it feels like it's told from the the point of view of a real criminal and it is because it's based on the novel no beast so fierce by edward bunker who again is in the movie 
and was a career criminal himself, but also turned it hit um, you know his life and uh, criminality and jail time into books, and he wrote several books. And No Be So Pierce is a great book too, by the way. I highly recommend picking that up. Uh, but this Blu-ray looks great. I'm so so happy to have it. Um, it ports over the uh, commentary with Dustin Hoffman and Ulu Grossbard, which I really like. And the vintage feature at Straight Time, he wrote it for the criminals. Um, sort of a, you know, of the time piece uh, about the film. And that's great too. But one of the great 70s crime films. I know this has huge fans among directors of today, Tarantino among others. And I just can't recommend it enough. This is your pick of the month for sure. Um, but there's more. Let's talk about A Night at the Opera. The Marx Brothers, I love me some classic comedy. I've talked about it before on the channel. Go back and look at my classic comedy collecting video if you want. Um, very excited to have this. And, of course, from Warner Archive, the transfers always look great. This black and white transfer looks lovely. And it ports over a bunch of special features that I'll get into in a second. But I'll be honest, like this one I know had a great reputation. And I've always loved all the Marx Brothers films. But for whatever reason, I was always a little bit less hot on this. Like, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And in rewatching it on this Blu-ray, I don't know what I was thinking. I absolutely love it. It is so great. And one of the thing that, things that sort of comes out in the featurettes is, and the commentaries and such, is that, you know, obviously the progression of the Marx Brothers is they're doing their stuff on stage. They do some of their movies for Paramount. And those are basically, at least the first two, Animal Crackers and the Coconuts, uh, in reverse, coconuts and animal crackers are basically um, they them doing their stage stuff as a movie. It's it's adapted for the screen, but it's more or less their stage plays as films, and I like that. Uh, and then they do Duck Soup, and it bombs, and that's you know one of the great comedies ever made. Uh, so it's crazy, but so then you know they're kind of in limbo, and I guess Chico has a card game with. Um, you know, uh, the Wonderkind uh, over at um, over at uh, MGM, Irving Th Thalberg, of course. And um, they just, I think they're playing bridge and Thalberg and Chico decide that, you know, maybe he could work with them. And so he does. And they start doing movies for MGM. And MGM is the more prestige studio of the period. And Thalberg takes them seriously. And I think Groucho himself talked about how how he really admired that and really respected and appreciated Thalberg appreciating them and taking them seriously. So, you know, Thalberg liked their other comedies, but he thought they were kind of silly and unstructured. And with MGM, they added a bit more structure. They kind of gave them a story, which, to be honest, I don't really need in a Marx Brothers movie. I'm fine with them just doing random silly stuff from one scene to the next. Like, that's fine with me. But Night at the Opera has a little bit more of a plot and... You know, they had musical numbers in their films previous to this, but MGM was known for its numbers. They had much bigger, more lavish musical numbers. And so those were then incorporated into the Marx Brothers movies. So they do this film. They do A Day at the Races, which I also really like and which I would assume and hope is coming from Warner Archive maybe at some point too. Um, but this is really the MGM, you know, cream of the crop. You know, this movie is just so funny. It has not only... Um, the uh, stateroom scene, which is this wonderful, it's a boat movie mostly, you know, like they, there's some stuff with the opera at the beginning and some at the end, um, but there's also a big boat trip in the middle and there's a great stateroom scene on the boat where the Marx Brothers have been given a really bad room, like a small, just a, bigger than a closet and people just keep coming in, like it's staff from the boat, do you want a manicure, here's the hard boiled eggs you ordered uh, you know, this guy's fixing the, the heater or something and they just keep piling into the room and Groucho just keeps inviting people in and it's hilarious. It's just one of their best scenes ever. But I totally forgotten about, uh, there's a great contract scene where Groucho and Chico are talking about a contract and they're reading the contract and ripping it up and doing stuff like that. There's a great musical number where, um, Chico is playing the piano, which he always does for some children, which is kind of neat. So you get the kids reaction and then uh, Harpo plays the piano and plays the harp. And so it has all the elements of the old Marx Brothers movies, but it has a little bit more. And I just really, and all their gags are funny. They got Margaret Dumont again back and 
So I just I just really dug this. And um, so then uh, in terms of the actual features, uh, you have whoops, you have remarks on marks, which is a 34 minute featurette type thing that opens with Dom DeLuise. Um, it has Bob Whitey and Beats, Carl Reiner, Robert Osborne. It's mostly Bob Whitey um, who gives the history of them at MGM and talks about all that stuff I talked about with the Prestige Studio and all that. And um, Carl, like I said, Carl Reiner's in there. And so that's a great little bit. And then you have, of course, uh, the commentary by Leonard Malton, which is outstanding. Um, I can't remember if this is the one he did for the Criterion Laserdisc. I think it might be one he re-recorded for the DVD, which they ported over. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it goes all the way back to the Criterion. I'm not sure, but it's great. Uh, Groucho Marx on the High Gardener show from 1961. Uh, three vintage shorts. Um, and uh, and that's it. But it's a great package and a really funny Marx Brothers movie. Highly recommended. Could be a great place to start for somebody who wants to get into the Marx Brothers because um, it does have that structure and it's fun, but... I love that movie. Next up, we have a one that's a bit more underrated. This is The Window. As you can see, Barbara Hale, Bobby Driscoll, Arthur Kennedy, Paul Stewart. And this one, uh, it says a nine-year-old Tommy Woodry has a history of making things up, but he insists he really saw this, this, a murder in his own apartment building. No one believes Tommy's story, no one except the killers. From its taut pursuits to its sinister sense of danger lurking behind any apartment door, the window is a minor gem of film noir. Bobby Driscoll, playing perhaps the genre's youngest protagonist, received an honorary Oscar for his portrayal of the imperiled boy. Noted cinematographer Ted Tetzlaff, who shot Notorious, among other things, directs the film, ramping up the tension in this film based on a story by Cornell Rulrich, who, of course, did Rear Window. And what's neat about this one is if you watch it, You'll go, this reminds me a little bit of a certain 80s movie that I love called Cloak and Dagger. And yes, this film is definitely an influence on Cloak and Dagger. And, you know, that's sort of the 80s version of The Window is what that is. Um, but there's a lot of similarities. But this is really well done. And it's, I want to say it's like not that long. Like it's under 90 minutes. And it, um, 73 minutes. And it just really trucks along. And the kid is great. And it's just well paced and well built in terms of the the um, suspense of it and also looks great but as I think just a little bit lesser known and so for fans of noir and kids in peril movies um, I definitely have to recommend The Window well well worth your time and then I've got a couple westerns and Let's start with this one, The Naked Spur, and another one I've been waiting for for a while that I was really excited to get. This is uh, an Anthony Mann Western, one of several he did with James Stewart, um, and those are all great, and almost all of them feature a Jimmy Stewart that you're not used to seeing. If you know him from, you know, It's a Wonderful Life and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington or whatever, this is not that guy. This is a very much darker, um, psychologically damaged and you know borderline evil guy um and so as you can see it stars james stewart janet lee robert ryan and Malf ralph meeker and uh it says plain arithmetic money splits better two ways instead of three smooth talking outlaw ben vandergroat reasons to his captors three bounty hunters thrown together by chance they're taking him to justice in abilene but ben has other ideas if he can set the men against each other play on their greed their fears, their vanities, he may be able to make his break to freedom. In the third of his five landmark Anthony Mann directed westerns, James Stewart stars as the relentless leader of the bounty hunters caught in the snare of the hunted, that's Robert Ryan, of course, tough, sweating with tension, and towering as tall as its breathtaking Colorado Rocky setting. The Naked Spur is simply one of the best westerns ever made. That's Leonard Malton quoted right there. Um, and it's great, uh, beautiful Technicolor looking, I don't know if it's technically Technicolor, but it's a beautiful color transfer and uh, looks wonderful. And it has a vintage Pete Smith specialty short, things we can do without, and classic cartoon Little Johnny Jet as well. Um, no commentary, unfortunately. I would have loved to have something like that on this, but I am just glad to add it to my Anthony Mann Jimmy Stewart collection. Um, as most of the other ones, I think, have 
become available on Blu-ray. There may be some stragglers, but I'm pretty sure almost all of them are available now. Um, so just great to have this one. A, a outstanding, tense, psychological Western. You know, not the standard deal, almost bordering on more of a noir Western, if you will, while being daytime and color, you know, somehow it works. Love that one. And one I haven't had a chance to watch yet, watch yet, but I'm very excited about the Santa Fe Trail with Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland, directed by the great Michael Curtiz. Um, this one says, it has about everything in a high-priced horse opera should have. Hard riding, hard shooting, hard fighting, a bit of hard drinking, and Errol Flynn proclaims the New York Times. Add co-stars Olivia de Havilland, Ronald Reagan, Raymond Massey, and a somewhat revamped recreation of American history, and you're on the Santa Fe Trail. Bright young lieutenants Jeb Stewart, Flynn, and George Armstrong Custer, Reagan, are assigned to Kansas Territory to guard the Santa Fe Trail. There, they clash with the fanatical abolitionist John Brown Massey on one more, on a, on a more romantic side. They also vie for the hand of Kit Carson Holliday uh, de Havilland. But the pursuit of Brown leads the army to the pivotal battle at the Harper's Ferry, Virginia, which strikes the spark that hastens the Civil War. So it's one of those westerns that is a Civil War era western, as you could probably tell from the costumes on the front and everything. But I'm just a huge fan of, I actually really like most of the movies I've seen with Errol Flynn and Olivia, Olivia de Havilland. I really felt like they did a ton of great movies. They died with their boots on, comes to mind right away. Um, but they did a bunch together, obviously, Robin Hood and, and beyond. And uh, Curtis directed a lot of them. And this is one that I haven't seen, but I've only heard really solid things about. So I absolutely cannot wait to dive into this. A nice Western double bill with the Naked Spur. And again, a really solid month from Warner Archive overall. So that will do it for this little update of their titles. Hopefully there's something in here for you to enjoy or something you're excited about in October. And I can't wait to hear what they're going to bring out in November. It can only keep going uh, well as far as I'm concerned. So thank you so much and bye-bye.